the Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, Hello. relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux. I'm Ben. That's Jill. That's Pedro. We're still here. Hello. We're doing what we do. It's it's all we know what to, you know, all we know what to do. Sure, why not? <laughs> that is a kaleidoscope <laughs> verbal. Flatulence. Good Englishing. Yes, it was the goodest. I Englished very well on that, mind you. <laughs> yes. Hey, beautiful people. How's it going, man? Uh. Aww. There's still a lot of stuff to talk about. I mean, and I genuinely yeah. think there is. People are going to kind of dial back on this. No, no, they're not. So we're going to jump right into that. But, but let's find out what's going on. Uh, if we've been up to anything <laughs> since last week, Pedro, I know you were very excited as one of the freshly <laughs> minted work from home. <laughs> <laughs> well, freshly, well, last week I got minted as a key worker, which means I get to keep working while everyone else doesn't. Uh, but uh, at the same time, it's like, oh, now everyone gets to work from home because the government said so. So, yeah. Yay. <laughs> Finally. I was talking yeah. to one of my buddies, man, and he said they have resorted to, no, 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 not kidding. Getting the PCs, work PCs, and putting them in people's cars in one piece because they don't, they're don't they scared to unplug them and plug them back in. They're like, I'll never be able to hook it back up. Oh. <laughs> it's like, we've become very efficient at packing these and taping them so they can just take <laughs> okay. them and plug it in. <laughs> no laptops. We're talking oh about desktops. Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, you'll get used to it. The um, stir craziness kicks in after the first week about the first week in a couple of days you'll yeah be... all right next week around this time i'll <laughs> let you know <laughs> roughly around yeah. that time man because uh I, I was thinking about the it doesn't get too terribly crazy but like mm -hmm. the distraction stuff you know you're working at home legitimately when you're on you catch yourself on reddit and you're like all right but quit like, yep <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately working but, <laughs> A beneficial one is boredom cleaning or procrastination yes, very cleaning. Very good. You will go, yeah. man, I really don't want to do that. Is there anything that needs clean? House will get immaculate. It's brilliant. <laughs> also, stay away from the day drinking. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> because the second you think that's a good idea, someone's going to call you an hour later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're going to be real chatty. Jill, what's new with you? Oh, I've actually been enjoying having my Steve husband home. He's working from home and, and it's been nice spending time with him. We exercise together and are watching YouTube and Netflix and Twitch and all the things. So that's that's the good part of all about all this. <laughs> the, yeah, so that's really good. And I'm home from my job as well, so <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Steve immediately coming back with working. Working yeah. would be this <laughs> working, <foreign> concept, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I was talking to Pedro way early. I was like, I've been catching up on my invoices. That's, that's kind of the thing of like the first time in probably six years that I'm like within a half a month and being caught up. Mm. That's a, that's a weird feeling. Got to do something with that extra time, man. Yeah. One thing I did do is I reworked our um, return video system, putting to use that fancy HDMI splitter or Ethereum picked up for us uh, maybe a month ago, two months ago. It's like, I got mm -hmm. to do this. And if you saw the picture I posted on Twitter, I also put it in our Discord a little bit earlier. I think the final count was 13 or 14 HDMI cables between yes. like here uh -huh. and here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely a thing that took place and um, we're running debian testing on the jordan box and jack box because i'm trying to track down a problem and uh, let's see what else is new this showed up more on that in the <laughs> video later but uh mm -hmm. let's get right into it because we got to talk about firefox and everybody loves firefox yeah i do i'm using it right now Oh, mm -hmm. boy. Uh, well, good <laughs> yes. news, everyone. That horrible, evil FTP protocol that no one ever uses until you do is going away. Mozilla says we're doing this for security reasons. FTP is an insecure protocol to which everyone go, yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, but you don't say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're going to be getting rid of it completely. It's going to be gone. And it's just like Chrome. Chrome's ahead on this. And 
as I said, nobody ever uses FTP until that one site. And you're like, oh, that's where the thing is I need. And you're not going to be able to play with it. But for now, you'll be able to re-enable FTP support via your preferences inside, you know, the about config page. They're going to go scorched earth policy on this at the beginning of 2021. So brush up on wget. Now, I saw a lot of people jump in and they're like, yo, I got the file Zilla. To which <laughs> it's like my problem with FileZilla stems from something we talked about on this show with the inclusion of adware. And it wasn't the inclusion of adware and some of the um, data mining stuff that was included in that adware. It was the developer's reaction to that's not a problem. Like, so that's how you think yeah. about that. That mm -hmm. I had more of a problem with than the problem at hand. Yeah. To be fair, the version I still keep around, uh, usually on the laptop, it's um, just a tar.gz from a couple of years ago. <laughs> There's mm. probably other security vulnerabilities with it, but it never had any of the uh, weird telemetry BS. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right same here, Pedro. I've kept an old version around. And what's interesting is, you know, the secure file transfer pro protocol, which also had per file encryption is actually superior to HTTPS in a lot of ways, but it never quite took off, which was sad. Um, I remember when that was introduced and everyone's like, oh, you know, <laughs> get on the SFTP. <laughs> well, I mean, SFTP, you're, you're going to be dealing with it, but I mean, everyone still uses SSH, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Pro tip, if you need to SSH with a GUI with Thudor on XFCE, just SFTP and yeah. wherever you need to SSH into, done. Mm -hmm. Yep. Piece of cake. <laughs> no FTP love, though. WGET. Learn to use it on that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it works, man. So, yes. you know, times Speaking have changed. Speaking of, uh, yeah, Firefox yeah. catching up to other browsers, uh, yes. that's <laughs> another thing that Chrome already had in place, which was the uh, hardware media control. Say you have a keyboard that has like a pause, play, stop, fast forward, a backwards button. Uh, you couldn't use those with Firefox unless you were using a third-party extension. Well, uh, starting with uh, Firefox 71, Mozilla had uh, enabled that particular API, and it will be on by default starting in Firefox 76. So that's good. That's very good. It, again, Chrome had already introduced this a couple of versions ago, so it makes sense. And... Um, after uh, Firefox did this big change to the new engine from the previous uh, Gecko engine, the um, all of the old extensions that used to let you have that, like third-party stuff to use your uh, keyboard media controls on the browser, those are broken. So, yeah, no, it's, mm. uh, it's, it's good to see. Very good to see. <laughs> Yeah, you know, this is actually a really, really nice feature. I've found that I've been using a lot in Chrome since we tested it out here on LWW a while back. So that's that's yeah. been very nice. I use the volume up and down a lot. <laughs> that's convenient. <laughs> but play too occasionally. <laughs> no, man, I'm sorry. But um, a browser opens up anything resembling an overlay, that feature, <laughs> that feature gets nuked from orbit right then, right there. I'm like, no. This isn't an, an overlay. It's just the hardware Pop media controls. Up anything. If you show me a display of something that is no bad browser. To be fair, the screenshot that they have is uh, from Windows, and that's just a stupid little Windows pop up that they have for the media controls. Mm -hmm. That that yeah. doesn't happen by default on Linux. Okay, let me tell you unless you're using KDE. About this, Pedro. <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> XFC 414 that's running on the um, testing box right now. Um, yeah. the Jordan box. When Jack connects to Pulse Audio, it has a little pop up in the upper right hand corner. You know that gray transparent notification. Like, yeah, yeah, that's going away. <laughs> 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 that's it. That's just me. That's a good thing. I, I guess if you use it, I don't know, man. I spend all of my time with um, Twitch and Firefox and stuff. I, I do that on tablets. Oh, you have media keys. Yeah, no, it's the the F keys. If I hit the uh, little ozone key on my keyboard, mm -hmm. it um, mm -hmm. it does media control. 
Ah, I was kind of hoping if you hit that and like it started playing like Maya He, Maya Who was in the little ozone drugs. <laughs> Not that ozone, oh, yes. Boom. No. <laughs> the world would have been a better place, man. So what do we have? Oh, ventilators. Oh, yes. Yeah. So yes, we do have a ventilator shortage here around the world. And uh, this shows you the power of open source and the speed at, at which it can process. So this is Open Source Ventilators, which is a team of volunteers working very hard and very quickly to develop a low cost and open source ventilator to help save lives and aid the recovery of COVID-19 patients. Wonderful. In one week, they built a prototype that will be validated as a, as a solution to the global ventilator shortage by Irish authorities as early as next week. And this was a project, by the way, that wasn't even started till March. Um, since uh, it just started in March 11th. So this is just the, the power of open source and how incredible it is. And uh, they're going to be, uh, they're doing it with uh, 3D printed parts and uh, found objects and, you know, open source devices. This is really, really great. And it's nice because it's a, a group of everyone from engineers to doctors to designers and educators and everyone in between. And That's pretty good. Yeah, and they're looking for contributors in all disciplines and skill sets. No matter what skill set you have, um, they they could use your help and you can register on their website. This is just amazing. I was so happy you know, when I saw this. <laughs> Pedro, how's Britannia doing with the um, panicking <laughs> about um, having so many surplus ventilators? <laughs> There's a lot of talk about uh, toilet paper, but uh, <laughs> I didn't hear anything about ventilators. Yeah. yeah, the media here in the States have been going a bit crazy about it. And they're also neglecting to tell everyone that like every anesthesia machine made in the last 30 years doubles as a ventilator. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> I heard one of the doctors say all it does is, is there's a, just a little change they have to make, but it's, it's easy a to switch. do. It's yeah. built in. <laughs> it's one of the functions of an anesthesia machine. Um, but... That doesn't get people panicky. Uh, but hey, man, yeah. this is a good project. That's good. And <laughs> mm -hmm. I know a lot of medical companies are like, quit doing that. That's a, you know, they have patents and stuff like that. But hey, man, deal with it. Uh, good work, you lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. If you have op open source everything else, why not ventilators? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that seems like a good thing, doesn't it? Like, yeah, you know, one of the things that you might want to be able to home. Well, OK, then where, where do we sit about this? Because when you start talking about medical devices, I think a very legitimate argument can be made of like, who does the QC checking on this? Mm. Well, what if you got, you know, it's like, oh, well, I, I get the cheapest filament I could buy. And <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what do you mean? Replace the filter. What filter? Hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not as bad as I know exactly what filter you're talking about. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we, we've all been there. Have you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, so ever fun. wanted to out hipster the most hipstery hipster ever? Well, now you can <laughs> with your rotary cell phone, a rotary mobile, and it's, there's a kit for sale. Uh, if you want like everything, you just stick the parts together. It's like 80 bucks, man. That's not bad at all. But this thing legitimately works. And uh, lady who put it together, like walks through, is like, well, here's my initial idea, which is always this, like shove everything into the case. Oh, I need to fix something up. Oh, that broke three other things. So then you actually have to like, print out a decent circuit board and lay it out. Check out the e-ink display, though. That's it's like, awesome. ah, that's super cool. Yeah. I dig that. <laughs> the first one uh, she put together is like, oh, it lasted about two hours on battery, but it's a lot better now. Plus, you get that chunky rotary dial. There it is, uh, debugging the serial connection. And uh, this, this, is, this is just cool, man. There it is. It's complete. Look at that. It's, it's even bent around the corner. They'll give you your missed calls. <laughs> and uh, yeah. All right, I'm down with that. I would never crack. All right, I'd take that out in public once, but <laughs> <laughs> you would explain it once, and when the second yeah. person rolled in and went, "What the hell is that?" You just punched them and run away. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because I legitimately bought way back in the day 
which was e- far less practical was on thinking they had a large rotary dial, you know, the big black mm-hmm. with a curlicue <laughs> and it had the yeah. um, 3.5 millimeter jack in the end. So I could put it in my phone and walk around with yes. it like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Use that exactly once. Got enough looks. <laughs> like we're done. With hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this Aww. this is practical and she wrote yes. she's like yo uh i wanted something i couldn't text on good luck texting on that even if you could <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that would take a long time you could <laughs> it'd take a while but you could <laughs> imagine yeah. trying to write a text prediction for rotary <laughs> oh gosh oh my god uh, it's like t9 but extra analog <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think there is actually a, definitely a market for this, especially for our seniors who just need a phone, you know, to make calls. Hipsters. And for, you mispronounced yeah. hipsters. There, hipsters. <laughs> okay. And people have a hard time using touch devices who have low vision and need a phone that is more tactile. This is actually functional. <laughs> so, and I'm glad it worked for her. <laughs> <laughs> that that no, it, it is turbo dial up hipster. It's a, it's yeah. that grade of uh, projects. <laughs> is, oh yeah, I'm going to take like the like the uh, rotary dial alone is ninety percent, I'd say, of the um, height of the uh, thickness of the thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm no, good, it. very good job, but. Uh, there is yeah. to be pointed out that this is a 3G, but now their plans for 4G. I think the hardest thing to yes. source on this is going to be the rotary dial. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when it's <laughs> small enough. Well, yeah. I say that they're probably not made anymore, but there's probably one place that still makes them. Yeah. Or, or 3D print them. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what's a Debian dog? Oh, this is awesome. So Debian Dog is a very small and lightweight Debian live distribution, um, which is similar uh, uh, similar to Puppy Linux. And, you know, this is a, actually a really great fork of Puppy Linux, but one that uses apt-get instead of its own package manager, which is really, really nice. And one that doesn't use the root account with full privileges by default which is a very good thing that's a lot of people's complaint uh, but about that's puppy like the whole thing about puppy <laughs> i know and i love puppy because of that too <laughs> but this is uh it's really neat because they have di- different variations they have um different uh debian versions um everything from jesse jesse to buster and they have um a ubuntu version and linux mint versions and i had used mint pump Mint, mint, <laughs> mint pump. Yes, <laughs> mint pump. A few years ago, and um, I still have it installed in one of my machines, my older machines here. And I've been enjoying playing with the Debian Dog derivatives. I just installed one on one of my old laptops a couple days ago, and uh, the Debian um, Dog derivative Buster Dog is uh, free of System D, so it's really, really fast and works really well on older hardware. Even a, you know a newer, of course, Debian distro, which is wonderful on older hardware, anyways. <laughs> but this is tuned just for those uh, low hardware specs, so it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is definitely a must try for me on one of the uh, older laptops, mm-hmm. just because. Yeah. You know, they have, they still have a 32 bit image for one. Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, it's really, yeah, really um, lightweight. It, it takes up no space in your uh, storage device and it still uses JWM. So it's still just mm-hmm. a snappy. So yeah. Very, very happy with that. Good yes. work. Good to see. <laughs> awesome. Hey, good news, Yay. everyone. Java loves. Wait, uh, no. Yeah, Java loves no, Microsoft. <laughs> no, mm-mm. Uh, there's okay. nothing good about any of what I just said, even though I butchered it. <laughs> Where did you get the Java? I don't know, man. Um, yeah. What Microsoft loves uh, yes. JavaScript packaging vendor NPM. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. that happened. Womp, yeah. Womp. All right. So <laughs> what's going on here, man? Microsoft <laughs> intends to integrate GitHub. NPM, so like if you're working on something, you'll be able to trace like a change from GitHub pull like all the way down to the NPM package version that may or may not sort it, 
before and after downloading two gigs of um, additional things, followed by this ad. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, that was I source worked. <laughs> <laughs> Is do we care? Honestly, yeah. I think Microsoft uh-huh. um, they seem to be gobbling up all the things that that uh-huh. that you know the whole. They they may still be on the extend um phase of uh, mm-hmm. the three E's, but <laughs> maybe giving money to NPM is a good way to stop the ads. Well, they already put a kibosh yeah. on the ads, didn't they? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> okay. they did. They did, and I was just sad to see that one of the major package managers uh, is not standalone anymore. You know that 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 was just that's the only sad thing about this. Otherwise, it's it's actually probably a really good thing for npm's growth let's hope hmm. <laughs> hopefully they'll sort out the uh 200 uh dependency per yeah. installed package but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah i don't really have much of a comment <laughs> on npm it's something i just avoid if i it's usually yes. with <laughs> if installing something to compile something requires npm I'm like no no <laughs> I don't, mainly because i don't want to track down exactly what was put on there <clears throat> that's my own fault i'm sure there's an easy way to do that to get it out because uh, there is okay i posted a link last time uh there was some npm thing we tested i posted mm-hmm. a link as to uh literally all it does is it goes to the folder to check the installed packages it checks the installed package dependencies and removes them all <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah okay well good on the team Very though good. i mean they got the microsoft money Right? Yeah. yeah. No, the, the <laughs> more that. money for developers is always good. Yeah. 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 100%. And they haven't turned uh, GitHub into a suspect for the best part I can tell. They've kind of been hands off about it. So. Yeah. They've been doing a very good job. Yeah. Maybe. I I don't know. I just said that because Microsoft is like, you know, it's been a minute since we've done something boneheaded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that shoe is going to drop at some point. Yeah. yeah. No, it It'll be a sad day. <laughs> hey, man. Linus has got some advice for everybody. Yeah. Who's working at home? <laughs> and it's mostly just like chill out, get used to it. You'll live. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> this is just like the real thing, man. This is from It's Fossil. This is going to be in the show notes after the fact. But, you know, it kind of goes through, you know, with Linus is he's like, are you going to miss human interaction? <laughs> after you get done laughing, you say no. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> get a pet, play with all that. I don't know, man. One of the things I was thinking about was somebody. Well, I effectively work from home six days a week, so procrastination takes many forms. Okay, <laughs> if, if, if you're at home, you got to deal with that. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna run out of Reddit to read, but um, one of the best uh, forms of procrastination that I found is like cleaning. That's very beneficial. You get uh-huh. stuff like that. You start walking around the house, going, "Hmm, you know what? Those floorboards look a little." I mean, things you would never <laughs> think about doing just to get out of doing work because there's no mm-hmm. one there going, hey, why are you cleaning the floorboards? Get back to work. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm doing something that needs to get done in, in order to avoid doing this. Um, yeah, Linus is just like, yo, just just your basic stuff. And that's something I'll back up. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. the get out of the house. This goes to like if you're a YouTuber, Twitch streamer, somebody like that. Make sure you get out of the house once or twice a week. Don't, don't. Like, yeah. <laughs> it is dangerously easy to become a shut in even before the self isolation thing with being able yeah. to, you know, Amazon home delivery, even with groceries now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So get out, get some people. Uh, don't get people, get near, well, don't get too near them, but you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Basically, go for a walk and if you see someone, run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go to the other side of the street like you normally would. <laughs> yeah, pretend they're zombies. Go all 28 days later and just run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I like some of uh, Linus's suggestions also of keeping, um, ad- and the idea of keeping track of time. There's different uh, software software you can install for Linux that lets you keep track of your time so you're not like on, on social networking too much or you're not video editing too much or whatever you need to do um, from working at home. And I actually write notes. I actually like to write things down a lot. So um, that 
that helps me and that's something that was a uh, tip that linus gave <laughs> oh no i'm sorry really i'm cool. too busy playing video games while i'm supposedly <laughs> working from home oh yeah. right i should probably stop that uh <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things, man. Like time tracking, depending on what you're doing, especially if a job that's project based, you'll just get lost. You'll lose concept of days, yeah, hours, mean nothing. Time. You'll uh, finally mm -hmm. go around to a part of the house that has a view of the outside, and you're like, "Ha!" Huh, be it dark <laughs> or light, you're like, "Interesting." <laughs> I, I feel I things have changed, <laughs> yeah. and you'll be completely screwed. You, I've been multiple times especially yesterday and the day before that when I was playing with stuff and I come out like I thought it would be night now then you have like oh no it's already tomorrow's <laughs> you gotta yeah. go <laughs> oh wait yeah. it's already daytime That's Ooh. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> they do that. so just like come up with a regular schedule try to do that and uh yeah that'd be safe S stick to your yeah. work schedule if you have a, a yeah. schedule at work stick to it everything else sort of falls into place uh yes. see this one is, of the this directors is the new, this is the new kid trying to tell you to do stuff that, <laughs> this, this time next week he's gonna eat those words he's like oh, well oh, yeah. cabin it's fever. been working for me uh <laughs> yeah. but all, yeah all, no one of the, the wait, uh, all day or the both days or is there just one i worked three days from home last I'm week just giving you a hard time <laughs> calm down <Aww>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no the um one of the directors were at work um they gave a bit of a mm -hmm. spiel about the need to differentiate now that everyone's working from home you need to differentiate like work time and non-work time at that point i'm going um i can do both <laughs> it, it's fine i, I, I could totally do both heck i'm playing a video game as i'm listening to you right now so <laughs> yeah. make sure you have your audio set up correctly on conference calls too Mm, yes yes that's a thing <laughs> physical separation unplug your headset from one device and plug it into the other do that and especially if you're just genuinely not going to pay any attention like if you're watching youtube videos yeah make sure that doesn't like what are you doing that uh, doesn't make a noise yes right yeah mm. <laughs> dude things that make noise is part of a new yeah. series that i'm rocking putting in your face each week it's called interfacing mm -hmm. linux because i need questions answered that the internet just could not deliver this this week is a cautionary tale of what made me decide to make the entire series in the first place this is a digi design what's the interface event it lets you record a lot of stuff that's it. So if you're doing music production or mm -hmm. podcasting or podcasting while doing music production, you're, you're one of those weird people. These, this is what you buy. If you need to plug a microphone into a computer, you're going to want one of these. Now, this, this had drivers in the kernel, man. This is what I went. I was like, oh, cool. Safety bike. Got a good deal on it. 60 bucks. And uh, yeah, doesn't work. <laughs> because. <laughs> Aww. And I talked about this uh, maybe like a month ago, two months ago when I first got this. Um, this this could really mess somebody up because you're, you're looking for something that's a good deal. Say you're looking like, hey, man, I want to start streaming and all that. Or maybe I just want to do a YouTube thing. Or maybe I just want to record myself and a couple of friends. And you're just doing this with like your super rare spare money. And say you had $80, $100 or something like that. And you put it towards this. These are used. Or, if, you know, a used device and you've read the internet and it says yeah this hey look it's even got a kernel driver you buy it you're not getting a refund for something like this and it shows up and it doesn't work and you confirm it doesn't work then you talk to the guy who made the drivers like yeah it doesn't work mm -hmm. i could have told you that two years ago but drivers in the kernel <laughs> um so yeah this does have a bit of a happy ish ending because the person takashi who's uh, developing the elsa drivers for this particular device and is said that by the end of the year hopefully he'll have and what's wrong with it is it does connect but there's a click about every five to seven seconds in the recording or any oh. playback apparently it was a known bug nowhere on the internet so ah. custom retail you can watch and uh but you know i'm just buying these things out of pocket this is up next i cannot get a clear answer on the inter internet on whether or not these work so we got to find out and i'm going to post them online because it needs to be somewhere mm -hmm. rar 
Yes. <laughs> Look right. forward to that. So this one's already <laughs> out. Up right now for patrons is I have a thing for a $6 USB MIDI challenge. Because, you know, if you got like a keyboard or control surfaces or anything that's connected to MIDI, you might want to hook it up and you don't have the hardware MIDI ports. So you're like, okay, I bought the cheapest one I could find on eBay. Didn't have to. <laughs> challenge time. And we're going to find out whether or not it works. That's up on Patreon right now. If you want to go check that out, speak it a patron. I think before we get into that, uh, we're going to do the shameless plugs, but Jill, you talked yeah. to somebody. Yeah. That makes routers. So Yes, an open source router. Um, yeah, this is another Scale 18X interview I did with Mikhail Hureski, the project lead at Turris Open Routers. And it was good to see that Katana Steel in chat uh, uses one of their beautiful routers and really likes it a lot. So, and, and I was excited to do this interview because I had wanted to do this one last year and dig around to it. So I right. got him this year. <laughs> well, let's get into it. Okay, everyone, this is really awesome. I'm here at the Turris booth, and we've actually talked about their products on Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, and um, they make open source routers, and it's so wonderful to have open hardware, and Michael here is going to tell us all about it. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, we do open source uh, software because, well, how else do you do software nowadays? It doesn't make sense to do it closed source. With open source, uh, we have uh, plenty of software already available, plenty of people that is uh, working to make it perfect, plenty of people trying to fix it, uh, trying to fix various bugs, uh, trying to develop new features. And uh, what we do is uh, we do integration, we make sure that everything works, we release it and make it easily accessible to our end users. Well. When we are doing routers, uh, we provide people with uh, SSH access, so we provide people with root accounts so they can do whatever they want. They have uh, repositories full of additional services that they can install. And uh, we provide also full schematics and stuff like that. And uh, we support updates uh, for as long as it's uh, technically possible. For example, our all this router is currently more than six years old and we still wow. release updates because it builds, so why not? Yes. And Michael, can you uh, show us some of the hardware and what goes in, what's involved in making the open source router? Okay, so uh, this uh, one blinking here is uh, Thuris Omnia. That's our oldest one. And uh, that one is actually newly available in the US. We finally got through FCC. And uh, one thing that we have here as well is uh, our new design, and that's a modular router. Basically, we start with a CPU board, and then you decide what peripherals do you need. And you can just uh, slide them in. And uh, now you have a mini PCI Express slot. And we have also some four Ethernet slots or eight Ethernet boards, more USB slots and stuff like that. So yeah. you can customize uh, the hardware as an end user. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. When we are developing the software, we are trying to push uh, whatever we can to upstream. So for example, ah, sorry. <laughs> So, for example, the new modular one, uh, Mox, we got uh, almost everything uh, working with uh, 5.4 vanilla kernel. So you can run uh, pretty much anything uh, on it, uh, not only our distribution, but anything, any other Linux distribution as well, quite easily. So um, you have a WDRT on there as well? Oh. What we base our distribution on is OpenWRT. Okay. So we are using OpenWRT. We are actively participating in OpenWRT community. We are sending patches back. Uh, sometimes we are updating software that, uh, and uh, we are actually maintaining several packages as well. Mm. And uh, what we do apart from uh, taking OpenWRT as it is, uh, we develop uh, some more simplified 
web user interface to help even uh, beginners to understand and uh, nice. start with the package. Thank you so much, Michael. You were you were awesome for the first time doing an interview. You did a really, really good job. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. And thank you so much for telling us all about Turris Open Router. Thank Amazing. you. Amazing. Hey, that was neat, man. Um, <laughs> how many more of these do we have, Jill? We've got like two, three more? Three more. Three yeah. More? <laughs> all right. So we're going to be um, dealing those out later in yeah. uh, this month. I think that should wrap everything up. But... But now we got to say, hey, man, if you like what we do, you want to support the show, the best way to do that is patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Come get some cool rewards. Come say hi in our Discord. Get an extra hour of content each and every week and support the show at the same time. But hey, man, maybe you just want some clothes. We got that too. Put our face on your body. Put Frank's face on your body. That's a better solution. <laughs> Put some hell elks where it counts, people. Maybe even <laughs> yes. a penguin. We got cops, mugs, stickers. It is brilliant. It is affordable. And it keeps our little dog and pony show going loud, live, independent, and ad-free. No nasty tracking stuff, and we're able to host everything and deliver it to you, which is kind of cool. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is about as close to an ad as we'll get. Oh, Shall you're e-begging. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just pulling up, um, what was it earlier? It might have been Sunday or Monday. Uh, I pulled up the stats uh, just for our, our downloads. And because somebody was saying Windows users don't know, I was like, what are our numbers? Uh, one week left to go and 109,000 downloads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like 38% yeah. from Windows alone. Yeah. And then the That's rest awesome. is broken up. <laughs> but it's like oh huh, yeah. okay <laughs> yeah a lot of that's video <laughs> so <laughs> what i'm saying is thank each and every one of you for yeah. um, uh christian who's a new patron Ooh. yes <laughs> yay thank you, christian. Christian, thank every you. little bit counts when i gotta write daddy amazon it. <laughs> it's like here you go buddy <laughs> thanks yeah. um that's awesome that is very awesome that we get to keep doing this uh how about a slice of pie is that good nice yeah might as well it's a slice. very tangential uh slice of pie this isn't, week isn't that an edgy slice of pie though yeah, yeah I, so I guess it's edgy. supposed to be raspberry pie <laughs> I, I <laughs> little dots. Pumpkin. <laughs> oh. yeah no that oh. looks uh pumpkin mm. okay <laughs> it's the worst kind of pumpkin yeah. uh, but no this one comes uh from the uh the raspberry pie magazine mm. magpie and um it's not about raspberry pie specifically but it came from the pie magazine so there's that uh, it's yeah. about uh, yeah neil shepherd um uh, who had a bit of a broken laptop and uh said broken laptop languished in a cupboard for a couple of months like a couple of my non-broken laptops, uh, those are all working, and uh, some of them have been sitting for about that long. Uh, but it languished for a couple of months at the bottom of a cupboard. And then he decided, you know, should probably do something with that. And uh, he built a wooden frame around the 17-inch screen, because we were talking about a chonky laptop here. Mm-hmm. Like one of the uh, Jill kind ones. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, no, it... Uh, 17.1 inch screen with all the stuff there. There is uh, technically a pie there, I suppose, <laughs> uh, that you could use uh, powered from the display directly. So you you could just use a laptop display with the pie, uh, or if the rest of the laptop itself is still working, you could just use that particular brand of hardware. It's uh, it it's a very ingenious use, and if the panel is the only thing that you could salvage, yeah. Using it for Raspberry <laughs> Pi is the least of the uh, the least worst thing I can think of, and uh, this story is called Raspberry Pine. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> it's like wait a second, like Pine sixty four Raspberry Pi. Are they yeah. doing a thing? Oh no 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 no! no. no. That, that bit of wood around wood. the uh, display. Well, That's I, pine. I was curious yes. when I uh, read the initial <laughs> headline because I was thinking pine. I was like, a pine, would somebody put a raspberry pie to But isn't that, didn't they, they kind of beat you to that? Um, <laughs> so, you know. I guess uh, the whole uh, repurposing a laptop screen 
directly yeah. Yeah. instead of just going to eBay first and buying it already with the inverter that you can just plug the HDMI into the pie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah upcycling. Did, did you just and, look at it in disdain yeah. going, put it in an Xbox <laughs> case. Scrub. <laughs> ah, yes. A full-on x86 CPU <laughs> with a dedicated GPU. It's only got 8 gigs of RAM. That might be the next thing it gets. So on a but, scale um, of that probably just cost like a couple of screws worth of monies. The, the screws and a couple of wires and I don't know, probably whatever the uh, the full bit of pine cost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it really still it still needs a steampunk wooden keyboard and mouse though. But she talked about that. They talked about that in the article. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> have a wooden keyboard and mouse, but a, a steampunk one would be really appropriate for for uh, that particular uh, the monitor and the stand it's in. <laughs> of course, uh, this whole article uh, still assumes that you could use a Raspberry Pi three B plus as a um, desktop yeah. computer of oh, yeah. sorts. <laughs> Good luck with that. You can. Hey, you can. <laughs> uh, I suppose if you lived uh, through the Pentium 2 back in the day, Dude, yeah, right. you could totally do it. You can, oh, hate on that. you can genuinely hate on that all you want, but I, I will be the first one to say every Raspberry Pi I've ever had, including from day one, was plugging it in and going, can I? It's like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> the, Raspberry, uh, the Raspberry Pi 4, it almost tricks you because... Once you have a browser up and running, it's like, oh, it's actually pretty snappy with switching tabs and loading videos and whatnot. And then you hit the minimize button and everything stays on screen for like two seconds before going <laughs> yeah. away. It's like, oh, that's right. Well, okay. Uh, when the first Pi was released, it wasn't how quick it could run Chromium. No, what we were waiting for was if. <laughs> we had a different set of expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Will it load? Oh, it did. it's going to do it. Yay. And then you just blew out the GUI. It was like, okay, that, that was a fun little experiment. But yeah, yeah the Pi yeah. 4 is quite believable. Hey, yeah. maybe you like doing strange, weird, and uh, entertaining things with your Pies. Uh, we'd like to know about it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You should totally tell us Yay. about it. Take pictures. Um, I, w <laughs> I was going to offer up another suggestion, but this is not Saturday. Come back then. Uh, so uh, if you do uh, build up a um, bit of a project with your Raspberry Pi or you're thinking about something, but you have some input that you require, feel free to head on over to LinuxGameCast.com and hit the contact button. Make sure you pick LWDW from the little show box and uh, fill in the rest of the form. It's pretty easy. Just uh, send mm -hmm. us some pictures, send us some things yes we'll be happy to feature them right here right now do it you send it up yes I'm like hey man i got a question thought hint allegation or just tell pedro <laughs> that you know his googly eyes or well not very googly they're just kind of stationary <laughs> no I i'm not it's going to say mute it's like no the punishment will be far more severe yeah. <laughs> Beautiful people, we will see you next week. Uh, until then, let's roll some credits. Yeah. Yay! We get to thank our producers and executive producers and our new advisor. Haplo! Oh, it's Haplo's fault. Blame Haplo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Haplo! Arthur and Foxy, Andrew, Empty, yeah, and everyone else. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we can't keep up with it anymore. No, that was just Pedro's work ethic verbalized. <laughs> Is it good? That's enough. Twenty-five percent of the way there. Good yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got a point. I'm good. <laughs> it's like I can technically pass with that, so that's fine. LWW two fifteen, amazing. <laughs> Yay! Bye, everyone. Awesome. <laughs>